Hi everyone, welcome back to Apples and Tiaras. So today is kind of a crazy day and you're probably seeing these videos way out of order and I apologize for that, but today is the first day that my house is on the market to be sold and a lot of things have led up to today. Hopefully I have filled all of you in in my previous video. Um, but today is kind of like a benchmark day for me because it marks the first day that I am officially selling my home or our home. Um, so my kind of like living situation is going to be kind of changing a lot because it's just me in the house right now and I'm selling it. So every day before I go to work, I have to kind of like make sure that the house is like in mint condition because there could be a walkthrough or a showing basically any time of day. So I'm kind of going to take you guys through like my plan in this video and just show you guys a couple of things that I'm like doing or practicing to help myself manage making sure my house is in mint condition every single day before I leave work. Just little things that I'm doing that are different that are going to help me manage this because with my ADHD and like the amount of things I'm trying to tackle right now, my brain is kind of everywhere. And so to help myself stay in a focused mindset on my house, I have to do certain things a little bit differently than normal. So I'm going to show you guys what that means. Okay. So for example, this is one of my linen closets in my hallway. Now, normally I would put my backpacks kind of right here on this little landing place where I always just kind of throw my stuff. But because I want to make sure that this area stays organized and clean, I am trying to get in the habit of hanging up my backpacks here. So like this is my work bag and then I have my gym bag here as well. Um, so I'm trying to like be conscious about hanging up my stuff in there. I can leave my purse because I'm going to take that with me in just a few minutes when I go uh, run errands. But I'm going to try to do my best to remember to hang up my backpack here right when I walk in the door so that I don't have it just like out. Um, and this is good practice anyway. This is something that I should be doing anyways, but I just don't. So that is one thing I've been trying to do to help myself stay on top of things. Um, this is not usually here, but Cash is out with my parents. He'll be back to grab that. Um, and then another thing is trying to keep the sink clear of anything. So if I hand wash something, like let's say I have a dish that can go in the dishwasher. What I'm going to do is immediately put it in there, rinse it, put it in there, no questions asked. Normal Charlotte would have like a drying towel here and I would hand wash things, put them there to dry because usually I'm hand washing like things I'm going to use on a daily basis. But instead of doing that, I'm going to start putting them down here on this little drying rack. And since it's just me in the house, I really shouldn't have very many dishes other than like my coffee cup or like my water cup or maybe like a fork or something that I'm just like I just use and I need it to dry but like I have to run and I'm not sure if someone's going to come in and look at the house so I decide I'm going to start drying like just basic dishes down here ones that have to be hand washed that way all I have to do and I put like all my dishwashing stuff down here all I have to do is wash it stick it down here and then the counter stays completely clean. So seeing as it's like my first day of the house being up for sale, I'm going to kind of like as I come up with ideas of things I need to do to keep myself organized, I'm going to continue to add to this video and update you guys on the whole process because it's going to be a lot. Uh, like my, my whole house is like staged. So like everything is in like the perfect place and I have to be very cognizant of where it is. Otherwise, I could get myself really unorganized. So, with that being said, I'll update you on the next idea when I have one. So, another trick that I thought I would try um, to help me keep the house like perfectly ready for a showing is by covering up half the counter with a towel. Um, I'll get ready right here in front of this towel. If I need the sink, I'll use that one, but I'll get ready right here in front of this towel. That way any like makeup or hair <coughs> drops onto this towel rather than on the countertop. And then that way, um, 
before I leave, I just kind of fold the towel up, put it away in the closet, and then the countertop is perfectly clean. Um, so we're gonna try that out today and see if it works. Cheers. <laughs> All right, you guys, so it is March uh, 9th. Let me check my watch. What time is it? Yes. Okay, so it's March 9th, and I honestly don't remember the last time I checked in with you guys, but there have been some new developments. I do not understand what's going on with my hair. There's like, okay, we're not even worried about that. Um, I apologize for the weird noise in the background. My air fryer's running right now. I'm cooking bacon for my um, breakfast. I'm gonna be making a bacon cheese um, wrap with like those Ezekiel wraps. Um, anyway, so I wanted to do a quick check-in with you guys because there have been some new developments in this whole process of us moving up to Prescott. Sorry, this lighting is gonna be terrible, but it's quiet in here. So Monday, um, okay, so a little bit of background. My mom has a friend, a long time, lifelong friend, um, she was in our Bible study growing up. She was in our church. She came to all of my plays. Um, and she, I never really knew what she did for a living. Like I just kind of, you know, existed knowing her. Um, and a few years ago, I found out that she was the principal at one of the schools up in the Prescott area. So naturally, um, you know, with me and Scott moving up there, uh, my mom had mentioned to her that I would be looking for a job and if she were to have any openings to let her know. Um, and of course, she was like, yes, of course, have her send me her resume. Um, I don't know if I have any positions yet, but I just might in a few weeks. Um, so send me her resume and then if anything were to open up, I can contact her. Well, she did contact me. Um, and this was on Monday, so this was the 5th, and she asked me if I wanted to interview. Uh, the position she was interviewing for is a 6th grade math and science, and it just so happens that this is the school that I went to um, when I was living in the Prescott area as a child. Um, the school used to service um, all middle school, so when I was there it was 6th, 7th, and 8th graders but now the school is for fifth and sixth graders. It is a STEAM based fifth and sixth grade, like pre-middle school. I don't know what you would even call it, but it's fifth and sixth graders only. Um, so I interviewed and one of the lovely people in the interview was actually a coworker of mine from a few years back. And it was just really nice to see two friendly faces in the interview. So of course we went through the interview, everything went really great. Um, I asked tons of questions cause I always do. It's so important to do that. And all of their questions were, or all of my questions were answered like in a wonderful way. So a few hours later, she calls me and offers me the position. But she says, um, I don't know if it's for sure gonna be sixth grade. It might end up being fifth grade. I'm not positive, but everything is supposed to be finalized this Friday with her staff. So she said, let's, um, I said, well, why don't I wait until Friday when you can let me know if it's gonna be fifth or sixth grade and I'll give you my answer on Friday. So it's Thursday and that means that tomorrow I could potentially have a job um, and the school, this school is the feeder school to where Cash would end up going when he's in fifth grade and sixth grade. And it's very close to the lot that we're trying to purchase. Um, it's also my mom's house where we're going to be staying for the next year ish is also zoned for that school. So it's kind of like a blessing, but I'll be completely honest with you guys. And I told her in the interview that sixth grade math scares me. Um, I failed it twice as a child and it sort of traumatized me. Um, I would be teaching sixth grade math and sixth grade science. So the sixth grade science is like no problemo. Sixth grade science is like super close to fourth grade science. It's all just 
like an elevated version. Um, so in that aspect, I'm really excited to teach science again. Um, they, they, they don't have a sixth grade mystery science program. However, they do have a sixth grade generation genius program. And one of my dear, dear friends that's with me at my current school has already promised to send me anything and everything that she can to help me out with the transition because she is like a master at sixth grade science. Um, and she is actually moving into a different position next year. So she won't be using much of her like sixth grade science stuff. She's actually gonna be moving into a STEM position. That's fabulous for her. Sorry guys, cutting my own head off here. Trying to wrap up my bacon so that I can get going. So anyways, tomorrow is Friday. Um, I had been communicating with the principal at the school that I worked at with Jennifer prior to moving back down here. And we've been trying to kind of find a way for me to get back to that school. But um, as of right now, she hasn't had any like openings that I would be interested in. Hold on. She did say that there might be a sixth grade ELA opening, but I don't know. I, I almost would rather teach math than ELA um, just because, you know, with ELA there's you know, reading barriers and, um, and grading writing. And honestly, if it was up to me, I would prefer to teach math, um, because math is typically like a, here's four ways to do it, you know, pick a strategy that works best for you and call, and we call it a day. Um, you know, and there's so much more fun, like games to play in math and I don't know. I just would prefer, personally, I would just prefer to teach math over ELA. So anyways, um, it's not looking like our old, my old school with Jennifer is going to be able to offer me a position in time. So I think I'm probably going to end up accepting the position to teach either fifth grade math and science or sixth grade math and science which is a huge leap for me. I've never taught anything above fourth grade. Um, I like sixth graders. Like all of my past kids that are now in sixth grade that come and visit me, I just adore them. Like socially, they're like so lost <laughs> because they're in this like huge middle school with all these older kids. But I'm hoping that the sixth graders that are at a fifth and sixth grade school aren't going to be as mature as the sixth graders down here. Um, I'm just gonna go with it. And you know what? Like, this is all a new adventure and I have to accept that it's a new adventure and I have to, you know, welcome new into my life. So, it is Thursday. Tomorrow I have to give my answer. A lot can happen between now and tomorrow. But I think that I've sort of made peace with everything and I would like to start learning about sixth grade math again. So today I'm actually gonna go down to my sixth grade math teacher at my current school and just observe for like 15 minutes just to see like how she, like, and it's, it's using Eureka Math. I've taught using Eureka Math before. Basically everything is scripted for you. There's ways to like make it more engaging and fun and things like that, but like basically everything is scripted. Like it's pretty impossible to fail unless I don't understand a concept. In which case they assured me there are math coaches that can help me out if there's a, a topic or like some sort of content that is confusing to me. So anyway, I figure I'm 32 years old. I'm a college graduate. If I can't learn sixth grade math at this point in my life, then we've got a major problem that we need to solve. So anyways, that is the latest update. Um, yeah, Cash is excited. He's like, oh, I'm going to get to ride the bus to school because he, he'd be able to ride the bus to his school. Um, so he wouldn't be stuck coming in early with me or staying late with me. He'd be able to ride the bus home, both to our new lot. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we get it. 
and or my mom's house. So either way, he'll be able to ride the bus. He could even ride the bus to my sister's house if he needed to. So with that being said, I feel like I feel like I need to go with it and just accept change and embrace it and then get started. Like I can spend all summer focusing on how to teach sixth grade math and develop a curriculum for sixth grade science. And they said they have certain, like they have resources and tools and they're looking at curriculums, but they really just want teachers to do what's best for kids, teach the standard by any means necessary, use the curriculums we bought, but if you need to mix it up a bit, you know, then that's okay. So yeah, that's the latest and greatest. Wish me luck. I'll check in and let you guys know if I accepted it or if something came from left field from the other school. But I'll keep you guys in the loop. Hi everyone. So I have another update for you guys. Um, a couple of updates actually. So the first one is I have officially accepted a position at one of the elementary schools in the Prescott area. And it was going to be the school where Jennifer and I taught together, but some things took place, nothing negative, just other opportunities presented themselves and I had to be an adult and make a decision. And I did. So I will not be working with Jennifer. Um, I will be working in a different district, but we'll still be like 15 minutes away, like living uh, 15 minutes away from each other. So we're gonna plan on seeing each other as often as possible and like doing planning together and like back to school stuff and all those things. So I am excited to be back with Jen. Um, but I did accept a position in the Prescott area at an elementary school and I'll be teaching Durham Lower Police, fourth grade science and social studies. At this point, you probably have already seen my announcement video. And so this isn't news to you, but um, it was a very long process. And maybe someday I'll make a video, like a story time, like telling you guys how it all went down, the decision to take this position. Cause I think it would be a very interesting story for you guys to hear. Also in the development, yesterday was Easter. And the Saturday prior, we actually got an offer on our home. The offer was a lot lower than our asking price and they wanted us to cover closing costs. At first we countered with um, something else. I don't wanna even get into it because it's a lot of like unnecessary information. But bottom line, um, we countered back and we ended up just taking their offer because our house has been listed for over a month now and we're kind of in that like limbo area where it's like, okay, if we don't accept an offer, like we really don't know what we could be getting um, further down the line. So we really just wanted to like accept what we could get and move on. Um, so we are gonna be making a little bit less than we imagined. Um, we're actually gonna net like around 20 grand less than we thought we would, but we are still gonna net enough to do what we need to do with that money um so it'll all be okay it's just a little bit less than we thought it was going to be so that is what it is we're just going to move on accept the offer and now we don't have to pay a mortgage for a home we're not living in anymore because may 25th rolls around we move out the house is sitting there for sale so we decided we're just going to go ahead and take the offer um and they've accepted they've accepted that we've accepted <laughs> so now we are in escrow um, which means that our move out date will be May 18th. So I, ooh, someone lost a point in specials. So we will be moving out of the house the week before school is out, which means I will probably move in with my neighbors for the last week of school. Um, and then that final week we'll move everything out of my classroom. Um, so we'll probably end up having like two U-Hauls. We'll move the house in one and then I'll just rent another one for my classroom and move that up that final day. So I'm very, very excited. Um, it seemed like it was never gonna happen, but this is like one of the last pieces to our puzzle. The very last thing that we need to do is get our owner builder loan approved and make the final purchase on our lot. So um, 
what this means this like home sale if everything goes okay. through and all that then we will be in a short escrow for our lot and the the property will be ours by the end of may so it's really exciting i'm praying that we get this construction loan because if we don't then we are royally in trouble i don't see why we wouldn't get it though because we both like have our official jobs and like we've shown that we are capable and everything like that so um it should all be okay but i'm excited i'm really excited i'm so happy uh, there's so many other things I want to share with you guys, but it's all very personal. So if you're interested in hearing more personal story time, we are going to be beginning to update our family YouTube channel within the next couple of weeks. I don't know when you're seeing this. It's probably going to be like the end of April that you're seeing all these videos. But if you're interested in following along with our like house building journey and our move journey and all that stuff, go ahead and uh, click my family channel link in the description below and we will do our very best to continue posting there because it is kind of nice for us to keep all these memories and such so anyway that is the latest and greatest when i have any more updates i'll let you guys know if not thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye guys